back in. All right, let's see if we can adjust the settings real quick. Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, we're using the new camera, and I got a app on here. It's I can go through and change like the the uh, uh, brightness and and all that stuff. Let's see if this will help. But hang on one second. Let's see if we'll open up some blinds here and see if that helps out a little bit. I just don't want it to get all washed out like it was last time. So um, we got Sierra in the house. She's right here next to us. I got to be real careful with this camera. If I uh, if I bump the USB connection, it'll disconnect and then the live stream's over, which is kind of lame. But we got little Miss Sierra right here. What's up, baby girl? What you doing? And uh, she's ready for some biscuits. And so I figured that what we would do this morning is um, it's real windy out. And I was going to get out and work on some stuff to get ready to take off for Colorado. But we got to cook some breakfast. And I thought we might as well do some stuff over the stove. So um, first things first, the stove is real busy this morning. I've got the fan on there, the eco fan. I've got my cast iron to start cooking. I've got my water, which I'm warming up to wash my hands. And then we've got a little bit of coffee in the coffee maker that's that's uh, currently being made. Right now, the stove is not warm. And I so that's why I wanted to do this live stream. I was like, well, I can do a live stream and show you like what I how I load the stove specifically for cooking and um, and how you bring things up to temperature and how you kind of keep an eye on stuff. So um, let me say what's up to everybody real quick. Though I do have the computer sitting to the right of the the webcam and so i'll need to look there so i have to look away from the camera real quick so all right so living with leave hey uh how's the snow it's uh, pretty much melted um all the stuff on the northern side on the north facing slopes is still there but the stuff on the on the southern facing slopes it's pretty much all melted except for under the trees um in this in this my specific location i probably only got like an inch so it wasn't a whole lot uh, but the temperatures have been really cold it's been down in like the teens at night with really high winds and this morning actually woke up with some winds waking us up. That's how we woke up. Uh, this winds were came and felt like a microburst or something like that. It hit the camper and really started rocking the camper a bunch. And so, um, so yeah, so but it's good. Everything's going good here. I've got a uh, video, which I've got about, I think I have about 20 minutes left of footage to, um, to edit up and then I'll, then I'll have a video done from Tuesday. And what sucks is, is like, I meant to take video of the storm and I slept through it. Unfortunately, I fell asleep sitting on my bed waiting for it. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's see what else we got here. Good morning from Montana. Hey, what's up, Chris? How you doing, brother? Simple prepping. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hope you're doing well. Tiffany Johnson, good morning back at you. Valiant One, hello. Uh, let's see. Jaded Optimus, greetings from Northeast Pennsylvania. How's it going, man? Chris Builds, uh, good morning from Texas. Oh, cool, man. Moon Pooch, our Moon Peach back at you. All right, let's see what else we got here. Good morning from Florida, Jason. Uh, we got Caleb in the house. Good morning, Brian. Hope you and Sierra are doing well. Yeah, Sierra's doing great. She's uh, she's ready for some biscuits this morning. When I busted out the little little deal here, we're just using the, just the store biscuits. When I busted this out this morning, she knew what it was and she got all happy. So she's like, "Oh, we got biscuits coming." So all right, let's see. Coop's off over points. Just get your truck out. Now I'm going on Monday to go pick or Tuesday to go pick it up. So let's see. What's my elevation? I'm right at about six thousand feet on the Colorado Plateau uh, in northern Arizona. So all right, let's see here um with the, with the weather's been crazy yeah in phoenix yeah it's been it's been nuts up here the wind has just been maniacal i mean it's been really really bad so um all right but let's get the stove going nothing too but maybe if the wind hits the stovepipe right we'll get a little bit of downdraft and i can show you what what, uh, what happens there i did want to do this one thing where you put a bunch of like paper products into the stove like cardboard or uh thick stock paper and you can get the stove to backdraft when it's on when it's on coals like this and what happens is is like if you put the damper on to where it's a little bit restricted airflow in the back, they'll leave the front of the of the airflow open. When the paper there gets the temperature to, to uh, ignite, if the airflow is dampened on the back, it won't ignite initially. So it'll keep heating up and heating up, and then it'll spark all at once. And when it does that, it poofs out of the front, and you'll get, like, ash that, that rockets out of the front of it, which is kind of fun. I mean, it's not really safe but you know if you're if you're if you're paying attention you're in good shape so all right let's see what else have we got here hi from new zealand oh what's up Ben smiler let's see um good morning from colombo sri lanka oh cool thanks for tuning in zach c good morning back at you right on all right cool we're, we're caught up with everyone here i think with the uh with the comments bfo good evening by the way from Kuwait. oh wow good good uh, good morning from arizona so all right so the stove here let me um i'm gonna move this down a little bit and i want to show you all the stove is right now just essentially all just coals and so there's nothing um 
There's no, there's no uh, uh, flames going with it. So let me come over here. And what we'll do is uh, pull this over. I want to show you how I pack the stove with wood in order to 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 cook stuff. So we're going to be real careful here. If I bump the USB thing, it'll it'll uh, it'll disconnect. So let's see. All right, so we're good to go there. Okay, so um, what we've got here is uh, just a bed of, of coals. That, and um, what I want to do is I want to bring all the coals in the back. I want to bring them up to the front here. So let me see. Let me grab my headlamp. Oh, darn. Where is that at? I don't see my headlamp. Well, let me grab the headlamp so I could kind of sh show you in there. But, um, okay, well, we can't see it. It's no big deal. Um, but essentially, all the coals are in the back part of the stove, and I want to bring them up to the front part of the stove because that gets the front part here heated up properly to where I can start cooking. And also, I can put um, uh, pieces of wood on the stove. So we're going to go ahead and pull this up. I always recommend using gloves on both hands when you're using your poker to pull the, the – uh, the coals up the nice thing about this little poker i'll show you this real quick is that it looks it, it kind of looks like a little hook thing like a little plow and what i'll do is when there's a bunch of ash and on the on the bottom of the stove i'll take this in there and i, and I push it along the bottom of the stove and it, and it acts like a plow to push the ash back and then with the top part you can rake you can rake forward the coals so you can push the spent stove spent ash back to the back of the stove which is what you want to do you want to get it away from the front and then pull the coals to the forward, like to the front, like this right here. And that's that's a real nice tool to use. So it's real small. It's just a really great little stove poker. And then it's got these little two little things on the end of like a little fork, so you can really grab like big pieces and pull it forward. So that's that's nice to have. So anyway, so we've we've got our coals now towards the front of the stove. And what I want to do is I want to load wood in here according to how I want it to burn. So I want to have a couple different veins of flame coming up so it's going to hit the bottom of the of the stove box here so i want to i want to i don't want to put like a whole piece of wood in like this just flat on there because that'll that'll kind of snuff out the flame that'll make it to where the flame only goes up on either side and that doesn't keep it very warm and so what i'll do is i'll come in here and i'll put in like i call them like little little holders like that you got one on each side and then i can put this in the middle and it'll keep it upright so let me show you here Just like so. Okay. Now what's going to happen is, is the flame. Let's see. Can we see that? Dang. Let me grab it. Hang on. I want to grab a light real quick. Hang on once. Well, darn, if I go up there and grab that, I may bump the USB thing. Let's see here. Um, oh, I know I can do it. Hang on one second. Okay. So... So right there, you see how there's the wood? You've got one vein there and one vein over there where, you, where the flames can actually come up and hit the bottom part of the stove box. Because you want the stove box to get flame. Now you can see there's already starting to get some some uh, some some uh, ash or some uh, smoke going. So we're going to go ahead and close it. Open up the airflow in full, and we're going to let that let that get going. Okay. So that's going to take probably about five or ten minutes for it to really start to get up to temperature, which is fine. And in the meantime, I've got the water on here because I want to wash my hands. So that's starting to warm up. It's getting relatively good. And then what I use for a little wash basin is I've got this little, uh, this little. it's called uh, uh, the kitchen sink, and it's from Sea to Summit. And it's, just, it's actually a backpacking stove, and it's leave no trace approved and all that stuff, which is great. And it, and it, uh, it uh, uh, folds out to this. It's pretty big. This is the 20 liter one. You can get a 10 liter one as well. So I use this for all my washing, for like washing my hands, washing my face, all that stuff. It's real nice because it's got these hooks or these um, <clears throat> these handles on both sides, and they're pretty durable. So you can put it in, in like a tree in between like two branches, and it holds it up, which is real nice. And it's pretty big, and it uh, collapses down to nothing, and then you can just put it back in here. So that's what I use for like for pretty much everything for washing, you know, because in the wintertime, I don't do outdoor showers because it's too cold. And so I'll use this for like sponge bath kind of stuff. And then also just to wash my hands in the morning and get my day going. But I think it's important. I mean, I know people, oh, here's my headlamp. I know people that um, <clears throat> that live off grid and they're like, oh, I don't need to clean. I don't ever wash my hands or anything like that. I'm like, yeah, you probably should though. Because I mean, 
working with the soil and after the parasite situation that I had with Giardia last year, you know, it's just crazy with all that stuff. I'm going to, let me see here. Let me turn down the brightness of this real quick. Hang on one second. The sun's starting to come up through here. So uh, may, may be a little bit uh, wonky with the light. As it comes up, I'll, I'll shut the blinds. Okay, but you can see in here now we've got we've got the flame going. Um, if I open this back up, you'll see it's starting to go. And so we've got multiple different um, uh, uh, flames that will be coming up and touching the bottom because I've got that you know, I've got that wood kind of sitting upright instead of over to the side. So you want to have that when you're when you're cooking. You don't want to have it to where you know your flame is only is like. You don't want to have a, a, a log that's your entire stove box. It's going to snuff out any flames coming up and licking the bottom of the of the uh, stove box there. Because you want that you want that that cooking surface to be hot. So all right, so I've got my um, my hand clean stuff right here. So what I'll do is I've got a little. Um, this is an old old uh, like plate you know scrubber and stuff like that so this is great for your, your fingers just to get your fingers clean and everything like that when you're out here and just, like i said living off grid like this everything just gets dirty especially working with the wood stove in the winter time working with the wood stove in the winter time will make your hands dirty all the time and you'll uh, i call them homeless hands it looks like your hands are just uh constantly you know just just a mess so we'll get this all cleaned up and then we'll start cooking here because i i do have the the um the, the skillet kind of the kind of heated up a little bit so we'll be able to get that up to temp pretty fast and um get our biscuits going and then we're leaving on tuesday to go get our truck which is going to be great and then i've got a long break-in process to do but we're going to try to do it as quickly as possible without damaging the en engine and doing it the right way and then we'll be back in arizona uh to start sierra's chemo and all that stuff and so Let's see here. Let's go with this. All right. What do y'all think of the new webcam? I think it's uh, I think it's a lot clearer than than uh, what I was using before. So all right, we're gonna get this out of the way and pull this over. I do have my coffee going in the back here, but I don't think yeah, it's not warm enough yet. The stove isn't for it to really get going. Another thing too is that if you're using a stove and you want it to heat up, make sure that the damper, whoops, the damper back here which is the stove uh, airflow in the back, make sure it's closed a little bit because what that's going to do, it's going to trap the heat inside your stove box. Okay. And so um, make sure that that's always, always closed a little bit. If it's wide open, you're, whoops, it'll, it'll warm up, it'll warm up real fast. Your stove box will, but it'll also go out real fast because all the wood inside the stove box will have been spent real fast with the air going through it. it it's basically like having like a fan on a, on, on a, on a campfire, you know, like if you got a lot of air on it, you know it's going to burn fast. If it doesn't have a lot of air on it, or if the air is restricted, the wood's going to it's going to going to burn, but it's going to burn real a lot slower than it would naturally. So that's kind of the idea of like working with the stove with the air flows in the front and the back. Um, let's see here. Some people say that in order to bake with the wood with the wood stove or over a wood stove with this uh, two skillets, that you need to heat the top one up. I don't really think that's necessary as long as you keep an eye on the the. Um, whatever you're baking, like if, like, for example, the biscuits, you have to flip them, you know? And so it's easy for me if like, if the bottom is real hot, but the top is still relatively cool. It's not that big of a deal for like an oven effect because you're essentially using the skillet portion to bake stuff, you know, the temperature from the skillet portion, but I'd recommend not having your skillet be, you know, blazing hot because you're going to end up just burning baked items on the outside and then the inside won't get baked. And so if you can have it to where it's kind of like medium temperature for a wood stove, you know, that's where you restrict the airflow a bit, make sure it's not running full bore, then you're in good shape. Now, if you're wanting to boil stuff, just run your stove full bore and it'll be, you know, it'll, it'll get there fast. But if you're looking to bake stuff or, or cook things, you know, don't, go, don't let it go super fast. It's like basically having your, your uh, propane on, you know, high and it's, it's, not worth, it's not worth it. So you'll, you'll go through too much wood and you'll burn stuff. But um Let's see here. Uh, that needs to warm up a little bit. All right, so we're going to hang out with little Miss Sierra. I've got a little bit of coffee left from the previous uh, one that I made. So let's turn this around. And we'll say what's up to everyone and answer some questions. Then we'll get back to bacon here. And when I say bacon, I mean baking goods, not not bacon as, as far as the uh, meat product. I'd love to have some bacon now. What you got there, sweetie? What are you doing, little stinker? Everybody loves you. 
All right. <clears throat> what you got, sweet girl? So Sierra's doing really good. Um, uh, the neighbor came over the other day and he met her when we first got here right after her surgery. And, and, and then he saw her yesterday. He's like, man, she's doing so much better. And I'm all, yeah. So she's, I know pumpkin. You're just a little stinker. Oh, you're just a happy girl. No, she knows, she knows the biscuits are coming. So she's, <laughs> so guess what she wants? <laughs> All right, girl, just, I know, we're going to get him. We're going to get him going. So she's doing really good. I think she loves being around the property and just kind of running around and doing stuff. So, you know, as I've been working on the, uh, the, the ATV show in the workshop, she's been having fun. Uh, she, she stays close, but she's, you know, she's in the, the in the general area. Um, we did find bear, uh, black bear scat over just about maybe 40 yards down the 40, 50 yards, excuse me, down the road. And when I was talking to my neighbor that lives up top, he's like, yeah, he's like, we've been getting a black bear on our, on our game cameras as of late. So we've got a mountain lion in the area and then also a black bear in the area. So I'm going to keep Sierra obviously much closer to me now, uh, as we work on the shed and get it all taken care of. Should have the shed done probably by Sunday. So it's that tomorrow. Because today I wanted to work on it, but the winds are too bad. So tomorrow the winds are going to be a little bit less, and then I can work on the ceiling on, on the roof of it. Get the roof all done, and we'll be all set. So, all right, let's see. Um, what have we got here? All right, cool. Everybody's saying that's a lot clearer and all that stuff. So good to go. So Donya, hey, what's going on? The sun just popped up. Got the YouTube notification. <laughs> nice. Well, I hope you have a good Saturday. All right, let's see. Good morning from New York, Paula. Good morning back at you. All right, cool. I'm glad to hear that this uh, that y'all are, are happy with uh, the USB or the um, not the USB the, the the new webcam. Let's see, what else have we got? Let's see, how do you take how do you make the mushroom coffee? Oh, the Z71 Outdoor Adventures. You're asking about the uh, the Four Sigmatic. Um, I I had the stuff. I just I just bought the ground package of it. You know, from uh, I think I always got it at Sprouts. And I would get the dark roast and the medium roast, and those are pretty good. I do have like the instant ones, but you know those those instant ones, like the freeze dried coffee that you just add to hot water, it's never as good as the good stuff as the, as the real stuff. And then lately, I've been um, getting down on this coffee right here. It's called uh, Just Coffee, and it's reanimated. Um, I can do about two cups of that a day, or two cups of that in the morning, and it doesn't it doesn't kill my stomach. So. That's good. Um, the other coffee, though, I mean, I, it's good. It's just it's really expensive, that mushroom coffee. I think it's like 20 bucks for something like this. So a little, little, little bit pricey. So, all right, let's see here. How is the stovepipe going out or the window rigged up? Uh, that, not me, was asking about um, how I've got my stovepipe rigged up. And so what this is, is I've got um, essentially it's just uh, welding cloth that I cut. And this, this is 1,000 degree welding cloth rating. This is 1,800 degree welding cloth rating. And then on the back here, behind it, I've got another 1,000, so it's double layered. And so what that does is that gives me protection from the heat on, um, you know, the walls that we have here on the side. Because I kind of had this tucked back in a portion of it back into a closet. And then that goes out, and it's just cut. I've got two of them cut. I've got a vent hole in here that, that comes in this way. And then a vent hole on the outside that goes out that way for the rain. And it works fine. It's just temporary for the moment. I didn't have a chance to redo the camper the way I wanted to um, before winter set in. And I needed the wood stove. And so I went ahead and just did this as a make good. And I did that in a in a, in a tent as well. There's a there's a three, uh, three season tent video that I had when I first started my channel back in like 2015. And it, I show how you can make... Um, well, I could show two things. One, how you can make uh, a, uh, a fireplace with your with using welding cloth. And then also, too, I made a stove jack with welding cloth. So I just made a stove jack in here. I took out one of the window panes and just put, punched it to the window and figured, like, the glass on all, all around it and then, um, like, the frame of the window kind of acts as, like, the, the heat shield area. And then with taking that one pane of the three panes that fold out, taking the one pane out is easily just put the stovepipe through there and then surrounded it with the welding cloth. And it's like a $40 hack that you can use. So it's, it works. All you have to do, though, is you just got to make sure you pay attention to it. Like you can't just let it run full bore and just go walk away from your camper for like four hours. You know, that's not a good idea whether you have a tent or a camper or whatever. You want to always stay next to your stove. So what I'll do if, if I leave... 
what I'll do is I'll um, let me show you here. Is I'll take the the front damper right there, and I'll put this to zero, like as far as the airflow in the front's concerned. And then I'll take the airflow in the back and I'll open it all the way up. And what that does is that takes the heat that's inside there and expenses it, like it expels it real quick through the stovepipe. It cools down your stove quickly as possible and snuffs out the flame. Oops. So that's how I do that. So let's uh, let's check the coffee real quick. See how we're working with that. Oh, not quite there. Let's see how we got this. It's getting warmer. We'll let that go a little bit longer and uh, probably have about. Uh, a little bit more temperature to, to, to rise up. I don't know what the temperature is of the stove. You can get thermometers that put on that, that attach to your stove pipe, but they're never really accurate because the heat difference between the stove pipe and the stove box is pretty big, but you don't ever have, I mean, like I've not seen them to where you have a, a temperature gauge right on the stove because it's probably, it probably get a little too hot. Um, inside the, the, the camper here though, I'm keeping it around 65 degrees. Um, I like it to be a little bit cooler. And with the nice breeze that we have today, there's plenty of cool air kicking through here. It's probably, I would say, about, about 20 outside right now, 20 Fahrenheit. So it's that negative four Celsius. Um, and so it's, it's been cold. Like it's, it's just basically the wind chill. It's been really bad. And then I can't do the metal roofing by myself if, uh, if the wind's bad because the sheets fly around and all that stuff. So I tried to do it the other day and got up there. And, and it was, I mean, I could, I could have done it, but the wind was getting to be pretty intense. And I just thought, you know. I ended up cutting my leg pretty good right here on one of the metal things that came off and hit my leg and stuff like that. So, all right, sweetie, I know. Don't worry. Sierra's Sierra all restless. She's like, let's get this show on the road. All right, so we got the sun coming up now. I'm going to go ahead and, and shut the blinds here just because I think we're going to get blown out. So let's do this real quick. Let's see how that looks. That's much better. Okay, cool. All right, we're in good shape. Let's see. Do the two cast irons work like a Dutch oven, Donya? Yes. They do. And so that's kind of the idea with it. The nice thing about it too, is that with the, here, let me pull this over. Um, the nice thing about having, let's see here. I'm trying to do this to make sure I don't hit the USB portion. Nice thing I like about using a, a skillet is that on the, on the either side here, you can you basically have vents. Okay. Now we have the coffee going. You see that coming out there. That's kind of cool that the light is hitting that right there. So the coffee's coming up, um, but you can vent this. So you can open this up and then you've got air vents on both sides that essentially will help, you know, vent this if it gets too hot. So you can kind of regulate temperature that way. And then uh, if you, if you do need to heat up the top of the stove or the, um, the top skillet, uh, is that gonna fall? hang on one second, let me put this over here. Okay, if you need to heat this up, you know, obviously it's real simple to do. You just put on the stove. But the, the thing is, if you look on here, I don't have a whole lot of room, you know. So that's the advantage of using a larger stove. This is a smaller stove. This is the this is the Kaneko Trekker stove. And so I essentially have enough room for a fan on the side. And you got to be careful with that because it can hit the stovepipe. And then a skillet. And then maybe like one deal of water that if I tuck it up in the corner here, it can kind of fit. And that's about all the room that you have on, on top of the stove. So you kind of have to be methodical if you're cooking stuff that's, that's, you know, requires like two things going at one time. Um, one of the things that I've been doing lately for breakfast, which I really like, is I'll take a potato, like a sweet potato, and I'll, and I'll cube it up. And uh, hang on a sec. Shut this thing. I'll cube it up to where um, the, the um, I can, I can bur uh, brown it up in the stove. And then I'll, 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 I'll make like a huge amount of it. And then put a little bit of cheese over it, and then avocado and salsa, and that is so good in the morning. All right, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get the brightness down here. Hang on one second. So I'm using, uh, kind of. Let's do a little bit. Let's 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 make it a little bit less bright. Let's see, is that gonna work? I don't know if it's changing or not. It's changing on my end when I can look at the app, but I don't know if it's changing on your end because it's kind of blown. It looks kind of blown out on the computer. So, all right, let's see. Let's go back here. So I'm going to pull this back a tad bit. Be real careful. Once I get a new computer, which I plan to do, I don't know, maybe that's the first of the year, um, it'll have the better connectors on the side to where I can just, just plug in, you know, whatever webcam I want, and I won't, I won't have to worry about knocking it. Because this one right here, if I accidentally bump it, it'll cut out the webcam, and then the live stream's over, which kind of sucks. 
So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and start cooking now. Um, let's see out of there. Let me grab a glove here. And uh, you can always tell if your stove or if your Dutch oven is way too hot. If you open it like this and a bunch of smoke comes out, that's not too bad. It's just steam. But if a bunch of smoke comes out like crazy, it's way too hot to cook on. Um, I know this is warm, so I'm going to pull it over the side. That's one thing that's nice about having like a side shelf or this little water container on the side is that it acts, the water container acts like a side shelf as well. And you can actually get your, your cast iron up off and not touching the, uh, the, the surface of the wood stove. If it's touching the surface of the wood stove, it's going to get hot real fast and stay hot. Um, if you want it to cool down, you're going to need to actually get it up off of that surface. So now that that's up off the surface, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the butter. And I put this down uh, just to, just so that it, that it makes it cook a little bit better. And I think it gives a little bit better taste with the biscuits, you know. And we're just using buttermilk biscuits. They're nothing special. They're the types that are store-bought that you get in a little cylinder. So it's not like I'm, I'm not, I wasn't slaving away this morning making uh, homemade biscuits or anything like that. But put them in there. Okay. So I want to pull this close so you can hear this. I don't know if you can hear that, how it's barely, barely, barely sizzling. And that's what you want if you're baking like, like breads or, you know, baked goods. You want it to where it's like barely sizzling. You don't want it to where it doesn't have any noise. That, that means it's not too hot. And you don't want it to where you put it on and it starts like frying. Because if that's the case, it's going to burn real fast. So what I'll do is I'll keep like, um, let's see. Where is that at? I'm obviously extremely, oh, there it is obviously extremely organized this morning but i'll keep a like a a, a, um, a, a spoon available or, or something that i can that i can reach into there real fast and then flip stuff so you know if you're baking things that you can flip in a cast iron dutch oven setup then that's nice because you can kind of cheat a little bit if it's getting too warm on one side you don't have to just be married to that one side if you're you know if you're baking like a, like a loaf of bread or something like that you probably can't flip it that much but if you've got this stuff going on, you know, it's not, it's, it's easy with the biscuits. So you can flip it over. And if it's, if the, if the, uh, the cooking area is too warm, you know, you can just keep flipping it a little bit quicker than you normally would. And you can stay ahead of getting it burned. So just a heads up. All right. Natural light is coming next. Okay, cool. Thanks, Leaf. Let's see here. Chris, we're coming clear up on my monitor. All right, right on. Fly fishing nomad. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? All right, Debbie. Yep. All right, cool. Mm, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. So I love cooking like this. Another thing too is that if you get like any sort of um, like banana bread or uh, any any types of bread like that, like pound cake or whatever, heating it up in the cast iron. I don't know what makes it what's different about it, or maybe if it's just in my head, but it seems like it always tastes better. And so um, I really like cooking over the cast iron. And you know when you're out here living this way, it's not you got the time. You know it takes longer, and it also takes a, little, a, a while. It's taken me a, a while to develop the right skills to know when I can bake certain things at certain temperatures and how to run the stove and all that stuff. But once you have that, it's kind of nice because you realize you're like, I don't, if I run out of propane from my, you know, camp stove or something like that, it's no big deal. You know, you can take the same skills that you have here and you can apply it to a fire. You know, uh, the difference with what the fire is, is that if, uh, if you're doing it over coals, you know, it can get really hot because you've got your, your, uh, you're, you're cooking right on the coals. So you may want to prop it up with like rocks, which is what I'll do. So what I'll do is uh, in the stove, in the fire pit, you know, you'll, you'll, you may see this in fire pits when you're, when you go camp, sometimes you'll look in there and you'd be like, why do people put rocks in here? And the reason why is because they want to elevate something to cook. You can also elevate something and put like a grate in there to make it to where you're not right on top of the flame. So here I would say there's probably at least, I don't know, five, six inches from where the coals are to where the cooking devices you know so that's why people put that in the into the campfires so all right let's see here good morning from an off-grid mama northern michigan ah cool i've got i've got bean soup on the wood stove oh that's cool julie that's awesome i've i've always heard the northern michigan like the upper peninsula and all that stuff is insane i've never been up there but i've i've seen pictures that just look incredible and then also looking on maps it's like it looks like a fly fishing mecca with all the rivers and everything the lakes so I'd love to go up there and check it out. And I was thinking too, I was like, you know, I've done so much in Colorado over the summers and I love Colorado. You don't get me wrong. And, you know, I want to spend more time this summer, this, this coming summer after this winter with Phil 
in uh in the san juans because he'll have his jeep all dialed in by then and we'll just bounce around all over the west but i definitely want to start traveling east you know and north because i'd love to check out like the new england area Ooh, it's getting kind of hot. i'd love to check out the new england area in in the fall and uh see all the colors i've also been wanting to go back to southern missouri and northern arkansas area i didn't get a chance to bounce into northern arkansas that's why i want to go back and go check out some of those spots but southern missouri is insane like the mark twain national forest is beautiful and my brother lives in brentwood tennessee and so i could cruise from here and like track fall you know fall would happen earlier in colorado so hit hit fall in colorado then go through the midwest and hit fall down in like the south in the midwest maybe go through texas and stuff like that they kick over to Tennessee and hang out over there. And uh, my my nephew, I think he might be starting. Whoops, I think he might be starting a rock a rock climbing gym somewhere, maybe Chat or Knoxville or something like that. Oh, okay, all right. I actually I wasn't paying attention. I want to show you this. I accidentally burned these just a tad bit already because I I didn't I didn't wasn't paying attention to the stove and it was going too fast. This one's fine. This one's got a little bit of burnt action on it. So we're gonna we're gonna leave the cast iron skillet over to the side here. Let it cool down a tad. So, but I'd love to go out east and like the history out there, especially like if I was able to make it to like Charleston, South Carolina, or some of those places. Just like the history is amazing. So it'd be cool. But also too, everything with COVID, who knows? It seems like the media is ramping up to try to want to keep everybody indoors again for the winter. So if that happens and they want like shutdowns and everything, then I'll just uh, after I get my truck, just come back here to the ranch and just not deal, just not deal with it. Because I. I will say that like last winter, um, it was a little bit stressful being out, you know, with uh, with all the people going crazy about COVID, and also the the winter before. So it was the winter before. Let's see, twenty it's March. So it was a little bit of the winter before, but it hadn't really taken effect until like spring, you know, when everybody started freaking out. But um, I I plan to just keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, like I'm fine, you know. I had a cold earlier this week, but I got over it pretty fast. So I'm like, it's no big deal. Just take care of yourself. I think you'll be in good shape. All right. Let's see here. That ain't burnt. That's just right, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like it crispy too. So I'm not, I'm not one of these that likes a doughy biscuit. You know, I like to have it to where it's crispy on the outside, hot on the inside. And then like, you know, you could put like egg on it and cheese and uh, some avocado and some bacon and all that stuff. I don't have any bacon or avocado. I do have cheese a little bit and I've got eggs. But um, let's see, maybe... I have a friend running a time today. Maybe she can give me some supplies. So, all right, let's see here. What's the deal with your truck? I am picking it up on Tuesday, so I'm pretty stoked. We finally, finally get my wheels back after three months, which would be good. So I dropped that off before Overland Expo West started. And initially, the guy was like, yeah, it'll be like six weeks, and here is three months later. But also, too, I didn't realize that my phone was kind of messed up. Um, I had uh, I wasn't getting any voicemails. And I was like, surely somebody's leaving me a voicemail. And um, I, I didn't have any. So I called AT&T and I was like, hey, I, I, I finally talked to my mechanic and he said that he tried to call and he left a message. I was like, I didn't get any messages on my phone. And uh, they, they did something on there and they're like, oh, yeah, I guess your voicemail wasn't set up right. And then they they, they like, here, we'll, we'll send all your voicemails. So I had like 17 voicemails. So I was like, oh, great. So I haven't been calling people back. And uh, he actually tried to call like last week to tell me that it was or two weeks ago to tell me that it was done. So. But uh, I've got a buddy here that's giving me a ride to uh, Cortez to go pick it up. And then we'll spend some time in Colorado. I'm probably going to take my winter camping setup with me because we've got a break in the engine. And, you know, they say like minimum of 500 miles of break in, but more like 2,500 miles, which that's going to be like almost a full month. And so I don't want to have it to where I rush back you know, and, uh, and have, and, and, and damage another engine, you know, out of the gate or whatever. Cause it's it got to think the other engines were damaged or something like that initially. So do like a really long break in period to where I really put in the miles and then jam back here. And then, you know, we can start with Sierra's chemo and all that stuff. So. All right. Let's see, Julie. Hey, welcome. Hope you're doing, hope you're having a good start to the morning. It's the exact same note of Vax passports. Yeah. I'm in the same, same boat. I just think it's crazy. You know, I think also too, it's just, uh, you know, you can't, you can't keep people locked down forever, you know? And, and I think that, I think that what we're seeing is, you know, as new stuff comes out, you know, humans can adapt to it. We've done it for, you know, a long time. And I think we'll be good on this one. Just take, I think the biggest thing is, is like any, any time, you know, just do preventative health maintenance or measures to where just eat good, you know, and you'll feel better. Like I do. If I, if I eat crappy, I feel it. You know, if I eat good, I feel it. 
And so if you get it, that that's like 90% of the battle right there. I think you'll just have a better day and all that stuff. And I don't know, maybe you'll, maybe you'll look a little bit sexier too. And somebody will tell you, you look nice. So, <laughs> so, all right, let's see here. I want to go ahead and uh, show you all Sierra. She's just chilling right there. Oh, what you got there, sweetie? You got something on your tail? Oh, nope, you're doing good. She's very attentive right now because she wants the biscuits. So let's see how we're looking on the biscuits here. Let's see here. All right, yep, we're looking good. Let's go ahead. I'm going to put this over here. And then we'll pull this out. Um, let me grab. All right, we're looking good on both sides. Yeah, these turned out real well. So what we've got is biscuits. They're buttermilk biscuits, both sides. They're nice and crispy. Let me show you on the inside. Nice and flaky, looking good. Oh yeah. Okay, so we, we got somebody who's obviously a little ramped up about COVID. So this big blue person is gonna um, have to be put on timeout. So sorry about that. People just get crazy. You know, you say something about anything that might be halfway controversial online. The next thing you know, you got somebody breathing down your throat, which is what that is. That says more about them than it does about you. So that's the one thing about being a content creator is like sometimes you just got to take a break from all that stuff. And people say, oh, I don't let it get to you. But, you know, we got 200,000 people following the channel. You, you do sometimes get some crazy stuff. I got on a uh, like like a woke list of of people really hammering my channel. And it was I think it was over like eating trout. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like. Like, and, and they were like, you know, you got to save that and you should never eat that. And you're a murderer and all that stuff. And I'm like, do you hold bears to the same, same accountability and mountain lions and all, and like all the animals that eat fish. I, like that was great. Like that was weird. That was like the summer of 2020. I had, to, I had that happen. So I had the wolf mob come after me for eating, eating that. But I I think that's more of like the, the, just the crazy vegan crowd or something. So, all right, Sierra, would you like to have some treats? Let's come over here, baby girl. Okay, come here, Snickers. Come here. You want some? Come here. Come here. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Over here. Come on. <laughs> she will stress her body and contort herself into the hardest positions possible in order to uh in order to get food, but she won't she won't move. Come on. Come on, over here. Come on, you gotta come over here. There you go. All right. There we go. Good deal. All right, cool. Okay, so that's kind of how you go about cooking over um, over a wood stove. And I just want to show you all that real quick. I figured since I was going to cook some um, some biscuits here, I'd go ahead and show you all. And then when you're when you're done with it, obviously take your take your cast iron off of your stove. Um, when you're when you're cooking with butter, what you can do is you can take like a, like a paper towel or something like that, and on the you'll still have a little bit of residue in here. If you look inside, you can kind of see all the, it's like shiny. And what you can do is you can come in and you can, you can, you can uh, push this around like this and just kind of rub it all around. And that will season the heck out of the interior of your uh, skillet there. Let's see, I'll just knock this off. And, uh, and that's a little bit of, a little bit of food left over, but that seasons the, the interior of your, um, of your cast iron and you don't have to sit there and complete and like re-season it and re-season it. You can just season it every time that you cook. And then when you're done with, well, but when you're, when you're done, if you use butter or like uh like a little bit of cooking oil, but I found butter works better when you're done, just always wipe it down, wipe down the sides, wipe down everything on the inside. And you'll always have a really good seasoned skillet for cast iron cooking. So, all right, let's put it over here. I'll answer a few questions and then we're going to get our day started. Cause we got to, we got to get a bunch of stuff done, even though it's Windy, I got to get ready to, to roll out. So wanted to say what's up. All right, see here. Um, people are so far from reality scary, man. Let me come that thought. Thank you, Keller Lewis. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's it's pretty interesting. Some of the some of the comments that I get, and I and I've I've got I've, I've had them even before the pandemic. So it's not like the pandemic has made it to where the comments have gone crazy, but it's definitely definitely ramped up and that that this down a little bit. You have people that are their their decision making and also their they're thinking, you know, and then you had the people that are just sitting there 
refreshing, you know, Reddit or, or Substack or whatever. And, uh, you know, and, or and horrible mainstream news that's all wrong. You know, they sit there and they, they, they go through that and then they come at you and you're like, dude, I'm not the reason that you're upset. <laughs> like, <laughs> so people just get crazy. Now, if you got a legitimate reason not to like someone, that's one thing. But like, coming after people online, that's like literally the most spineless thing that you can possibly do. So, all right, let's see. Um, so around here, uh, just to give you a heads up, the outhouse is done. It's not, it's not totally done, but it's operational enough to where I'm good to go. Got a little roof over it. It's been really nice to have. I didn't realize that digging cat holes for the last seven years kind of wore me out a little bit. So having a toilet is awesome. Uh, the shed is pretty much, it's all framed up. I just got to get the roof done. And so that's why I'm waiting for the wind to die down a little bit. Because with the wind and it, it bound and it's uh, those big metal sheets, those metal sheets are, are sharp on the edges. And they're like five feet by like four feet, you know. And so they're pretty big to work with. I can work with them if there's no wind. But if there's wind, I just don't want to have it to where I could possibly cut myself really bad. Because I'm back here by myself. You know, there's not a whole lot of people coming around. So, but um, but yeah, I'm stoked to get that done. That will be uh, squared away. I did put both ATVs in there and they fit just fine. And that'll be all squared away before I leave. And then I'll probably be gone for like three weeks, you know, three or four weeks uh, as we get the new engine broken in. It does look like snow right when I arrive in Colorado. So I don't know. I've got to put 500 miles of really gentle uh, engine driving on the, the truck before I can really start to drive, you know, over like 40 miles an hour. Uh, well, actually over 50. And so um, I'm going to do that around town. And so I've got a hotel in town for two days just to drive around town constantly all day long. I put 500 miles on it. Then I can do that oil change. Then I can do a little bit more driving miles, but not necessarily uh, interstate miles. And then once I get to 2,500 miles on their total, then I can then I can jam. So I'm going to go over and say what's up to Baron Elsa after I get my uh, truck broken in for that first initial stage. Go through my storage unit because that's where all my winter clothes are. Because all my, I don't have any winter clothes with me. Like I have... Like these shirts, which are really, really thin. Um, I've got normal summer hiking pants, that, and that's it. I don't have long underwear or nothing. And I was riding that quad into town, you know, when it was super, super cold out. So that, that maybe that's why I got a cold last week. I, I think that's probably what it was. But anyway, all right, let's see what else we got here. A few more. Um, let's see. I love freedom too much, Zach. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with you, man. Let's see, Christmas on the ranch for Christmas Eve. I'd, I'd love to, uh, Judy, but I think that we're going to be in Colorado breaking in the engine. So we leave here on Tuesday, and we're not going to be back for probably three or four weeks, which is fine. You know, I got Christmas next year I can do here, which is cool. So, all right, let's see what else have we got. Um, let's see, Paula, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Chastity C, are you in New Mexico? No, no, I'm over in northern Arizona. So, all right, let's see. Chocolate chip cookies, fire in the stove, Christmas music, Brian Sierra. Ah, oh, that's cool, Judy. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Uh, that's some chocolate chip cookies, man. That sounds great right now. So, all right. What else have we got? Good morning, Brian. Oh, what's up, Kenny? How you doing, man? Living in the wild, living free. My dog says, watches Siri Biscuits looking at me like, hey, mom, where's mine? <laughs> that's awesome. That reminds me, I got to give Sierra a little bit more. All right. We'll end on Sierra uh, having some biscuits here. What you got, little sweetie? You want, you want some more biscuits? You want some treats? Come here. You want this? Oh, I'm done. No, I know. You're just a little stinker. All right. There you go, girl. Let's see. So we've got uh, someone's asking if I was heading towards Aspen. Uh, not 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 Aspen, but definitely towards central Colorado to where there's going to be snow. So it looks like the forecast is saying that central Colorado should get hit probably by New Year, if not before. And so uh, so we'll, we'll be in good shape. So, all right. Let's see. Even Phoenix is crazy cold the last two days. Oh, yeah. It's been it's been pretty chilly up here. It's Yesterday during the daytime was was frigid. So pretty much staying here and just hunkered down by the stove all day long, which was nice. And then today we've got to um, uh, we've got to work on some stuff around here and just get a few things done, get all packed up and get ready to go. So, all right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, that's how you cook over the stove. It's pretty simple. Just you know, make sure that you get your stove set up the way you want to, as far as the flame sitting the bottom of it. Put your thing on there, start to warm it up, and just keep an eye on it, and you're good to go. So. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll have a new video tomorrow, and hope you all have a good Saturday. All right, thanks.